What's up, Pepper? Let your girl Adiola. So after stealing about $10 million, the court has allowed Andrew Yakubu, you guys remember him, to go abroad for medical treatment. Hey, hey, Shay, you see what I'm seeing? Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Oh, by the way, by the way, I really don't need to do a show this week. After that powerful message by Aisha Yesufu. Things are stagnating in Nigeria. For crying out loud, the president is sick. The president is not capable of discharging his duties as president. Why can't he resign? Ooh! Nobody is wishing the president bad. They've caught crying out loud for how long are we going to stay and wait and keep watching everything go in this array? Adia, please continue. Who is going to sign the budget? We don't know. The report on Babachi, what's happening to read? Why are we being held to ransom? Thank you, my sister. The vice president was ready to sign the budget, but can you believe that they didn't let him sign the budget? They said that they had to take the budget to Buhari in London on his sick bed to sign. I mean, come on. President Muhammad Buhari for crying out loud. You have been president twice. You have reached the peak of your career. Can you allow each and every one of us, 140 million Nigerians, is it 170? or whatever number we are, be able to have the opportunity to equally reach the peak of our careers. Tell him, my sister, I beg you. Can you just take some time off? Take care of yourself. May God give you good health. But please, Mr. President, do not allow this. Keep the rest of us in bondage. Thank you very much. This is what we've all been saying, that the president right now needs to focus on his health. Oh, God, why are you welcome to this program? You know I'm the only one that will tell you the truth. Let me look at the camera in case you're watching. You know, Nigerians have been talking. They are saying that your health is more important being a president is not by force why not step down and take a whole year you know to rest and relax and recuperate in fact the whole world will respect you for that you can live longer for your wife for your children you need to take care of yourself well mr president you know you've been president twice twice and i agree i concur and if you will not listen to us mr president then let the vice president do his job successfully without hindrance right now the vice president is being hindered by the cabal so he's not able to to function well because the first time you left the country or Gabu Adi, the vice president did wonders all of a sudden these people are afraid that the vice president is outshining the president so people have been saying people are saying that the cabal are restricting the vice president and you know what things are crumbling in Nigeria I mean they just announced that they are closing down five Nigerian embassies I'm like five embassies the giants of Africa what is the meaning of that that means more people just lost their jobs no so and every day we are hearing about military planning a coup in fact they've been confiscating containers of weapons in Nigeria. Are we going to wait for everything to fall apart, Mr. President, before you would do the right thing? And eh? you have to put the interest of the nation first. If you are no longer able to do the job for which you were elected, just be honest with us. Tell us, you know what, I've tried. Instead of you just going to spend months in London every day, you will say, oh, you are getting better, you're coming back. So you need to be honest with us. Cuckoo face your health or let Osimbajo do his job successfully when you are not around. Despite that, the man is trying his best. Or did you not see him at a Garaki market the other day talking to traders asking them about the recession at least the man is listening to the people even the fish seller has access to the vice president ben <laughs> And <laughs> it's a good thing, you know. Thank you. Talk to him. Tell him exactly how you are feeling. Why won't people like the vice president? We are here to see Ogabuari talk to people like this. You guys not doing anything. Well, guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Zimbabwe, Mugabe's daughter, Bona, has been appointed to the board of censors that monitors and controls and also regulates the media, as in the media, <laughs> as well as the film industry and, of course, the social media. Fadza, fadza. This is a family affair, okay? Her mom is the head of the ruling party and PF's women's wing, and then two of Mugabe's nephews are ministers. Bona's husband is the COO of Air Zimbabwe. Hey, wait a minute. Zimbabwe has an airline. Fadza! Zimbabwe has a national airline and we don't have a Nigeria. Wait, this is the air Zimbabwe. Oh, for that. This is the inside. Lord have mercy. Ah, that's it. I'm moving to Zimbabwe. <laughs> oh, by the way, what about uh, Namibia? They also have their own airline. Ah, for that. 
Is there anybody in Africa that doesn't have their own airline except Nigeria? You see? Nigerians, see your lives. <laughs> Let me see inside. Ah, oh, for that, this is inside Namibia. Namibia is where we are going after this show. Let's just move to Namibia. Back to our story. Zimbabweans believe that with the daughter in charge of censoring the media, the goal is to censor whatever reports will be published about Mugabe as well as whatever people will put on social media. Just imagine if Buhari's daughter is the one censoring the media in Nigeria. Ooh, father! I trust Nigerians. No, that will never happen. Anyway, still on Zimbabwe, a Zimbabwean pastor during church service decided to call God on his cell phone. <laughs> This was for you. Is this heaven? Yes! Is it heaven? Yes! Wait a minute. He's not sure whether it is heaven. Was he not the one who called who? Was he the one that called God or God was the one that called? This one that he's asking, is this heaven? Eh? My brother, if you are not sure where you dialed, why tell people that it is heaven? <laughs> what else, Papa God? What else, Papa God? have been nice at that particular moment that he's making that fake call if his phone would ring i mean just imagine how that would look like i have a woman here yeah. what do you have to say about her <laughs> that's it i'm done i should ask her who is sibo sibo who is sibo oh my zimbabwean people why <laughs> why now did you see his church members jumping ah. Online. Baba God, I beg no vex. No, uh -uh, no vex. <laughs> common sense is not that common. I mean, you know, I'm still trying to figure out who is more annoying if it's the clown <laughs> or the church members. You know, these pastors need to stop coming up with crazy ideas just to get attention. <laughs> Just to get attention. And for goodness sake, Christians should stop falling for scammers like this guy because you're looking for a miracle. If anyone is interested in watching the full video, I have it on my Facebook fan page. The clown actually said in an interview, this guy, he told reporters that he will soon release God's phone number. <laughs> we are still waiting. We are waiting until then. You know, I don't do anything. <laughs> I'm just keeping it real. And speaking of fake prophets, ladies and gentlemen, please meet Prophet Nana Poku of the Kingdom Prayer Ministry International in South Africa. Prophet Poku has an uncommon ministry of healing by kissing. <laughs> watching this program yes lord yes lord where are you run Come. you are a sinner ah, i don't know what to say i don't know what to, this is just bad in every way there's no way you can look at this that is not bad eh? how do you kiss somebody without their consent eh? this is not your wife and can you guys hear church members saying thank you jesus thank you jesus Yes, no. Oh my god, you I didn't ask you to play it. They had it the first time. It wasn't even like and my my you know that was not even pecking. That was a long kiss. Why? Eh? Oh by the way, if it's an elderly woman, he won't kiss them. He will only sit on them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Ah, Father. And sometimes he lays his hands on the breast. <laughs> Father in heaven, one more time, no vex. Eh? <laughs> no vex. For the ten years. My Ghanaian people, you need to talk to your son. You need to talk to your son. Wait, you think the man of God is bleaching? I don't think so. <laughs> he's a man of God. Maybe it's just my eyes, but you know, his hands look darker than his face. For two. Don't take offense, my chale brothers and sisters. We have them in Nigeria as well, and we shame them. You need to go and get your son from South Africa. He's embarrassing the name of Ghana in South Africa. And my people in South Africa, if you let him get away with this, and eh? after kissing, what is next? Uh, sex in the name of deliverance? Is that what you are waiting for? Me, I will continue to say my own and 
and yes i'm also a christian so i'm not saying that you shouldn't believe in god i'm just saying make you not shine your eye shine your eye well well <laughs> there are so many scammers out there now you guys know i don't know much guess what i'm just keeping it real moving on to ethiopia another activist has been sentenced to six years in prison for a Facebook post, we're talking about Yonatan Tesfaye. He was arrested in December of 2015, and he's now been pronounced guilty of encouraging terrorism, all because he wrote on Facebook in 2015 that the government of Ethiopia used force against protesters. I mean, that makes no sense, because everybody knows that the government has been using force against protesters. He didn't lie. Now, the sad thing is that the whole world is acting as if they don't know what's happening in Ethiopia. As a matter of fact, guess who the new director general of the World Health organization is Dr. Tedros Adhanom. That was Ethiopia's Minister of Health from 2005 to 2012 and also the Minister of Foreign Affairs from 2012 to 2016. He was also the chair of the Board of Global Funds to fight aid, tuberculosis and malaria. Very impressive, right? Except you can't help but wonder why for several months Ethiopians protested against his candidacy. I mean, why won't his own people want him as the Director General of the World Health Organization? I found that when he was the minister of health he covered up three cholera outbreaks in ethiopia in 2006 in 2009 and 2011 this was reported in the new york times and washington post and several international media outlets by the way so you can read about this the outbreaks happened in the oromo region and you guys know that for a long time they've been marginalizing the oromo people which was what led to the protest last year and then they declared state of emergency so instead of reporting that there's cholera outbreak among the Oromo people so that the World Health Organization could send vaccines, as the health minister, he decided to call it mere acute war 3 diarrhea. And people were like, diarrhea? How can it be diarrhea when about 60,000 people were affected in 2006? And not only that, he instructed his staff to avoid using the word cholera in their reports and also to make sure that they don't report the number of people affected. So can you believe that because of this, the World Health Organization did not send the needed vaccines and a lot of people died. More than 60,000 people were affected in 2006 and by February of 2007, more than 680 people had been reported dead. Although many people believe that it's much more than that. I mean, look at this headline on NBC, NBC News, and this was in 2007. They said hundreds died in suspected cholera outbreak. Ethiopia down place but UN experts say it's an epidemic. Now, this was 2007. I don't see why the media would make up this story about him 10 years ago when he wasn't even running for the World Health Organization director. And NBC was not the only one that reported. Several media outlets reported it at that time. The World Health Organization told him to do proper tests so that they would know if it's cholera or just diarrhea like he claimed. But he insisted that the outbreaks were in the remote places where there are no labs for tests. And then in 2009, the same thing. 18,000 people were affected. He insisted it's diarrhea. He only reported 34 deaths in 2009 and again people believe that more people had died and then when the outbreak happened in 2011 this same World Health Organization reported that 5 million Ethiopians were at risk. The World Health Organization knows about all these things yet he insisted that it's not cholera and again people died in 2011. Now some people are saying that he covered up so that tourists would not be scared of going to Ethiopia so he would rather sacrifice the lives of the Oromo people for the pride of the nation. I don't get it. Even though he is no longer the health minister, there is another cholera outbreak going on right now in Ethiopia which started from Somalia and uh, you know that Somalia borders Ethiopia. Somalia had already declared that this is cholera epidemic and they've already sent them the vaccines that they need. Yet the government of Ethiopia is still insisting that it's merely acute water diarrhea and 32,000 people have been affected this year as I'm speaking. Now the second thing that I found out is that despite chairing the board of global funds to fight tuberculosis, when this man was the minister of foreign affairs, that was when Ethiopia signed a 510 million dollar deal with Japan Tobacco International for them to come and expand tobacco farms and increase cigarette production as well as the number of smokers in Ethiopia. Now this also happened when more than 10 million Ethiopians were at risk of famine because of drought. It's ironic that he's chairing a committee to fight tuberculosis 
Resources yet is inviting Japan to come and expand tobacco farm. It's ironic because there are several reports about how tobacco smoking can increase the risk of developing tuberculosis. At the same time, while he was the Minister of Foreign Affairs, his office authorized British American Tobacco Company to post hundreds of posters advertising cigarettes in Ethiopia. Now this one is funny because there's no law against smoking in Ethiopia, but there's a law against advertising tobacco in Ethiopia. So you see the hypocrisy? I'm just saying that this is why so many Ethiopians now see the World Health Organization as less credible because they completely ignored all the reports about this man. So I want to know what you guys think about the fact that they completely ignored all this protest does it have anything to do with the fact that it's coming from Africans? Do you think we have a voice in the international arena when it comes to decision making in a situation like this? I want to know what you guys think about this. You guys don't know much. Guess what? I'm just keeping it real. Moving on to Cameroon, first of all, the internet is back in southern Cameroon, yes so, But not before the blackout cost Cameroon's economy $3.2 million. So let me tell you what has been happening in southern Cameroon. First of all, can you believe that the government is forcing secondary school students in the English part of the country, that is southern Cameroon, to write the GCE exam? That's the exam you write before you get to the university, despite the fact that these students have missed almost an entire academic year due to protests. Not only that, so Soldiers and policemen are parading their schools during exams. Where is that done? I've never heard of anything like that. Now, out of 180,000 students expected to write this year's GCE exam, only 40,000 registered, and more than 70% of them are from the francophone region of the country. Now, the minister of secondary school said that, well, they must have been studying at home, so they must write this exam by fire by force. So he instructed the GCE registrar to create special centers for those that did not register for the exam. Listen to what. Uh, a Cameroonian friend who is a lawyer, this is what he said. This is a calculated attempt by the French government to reduce the value of the most prestigious English exams in the country and replace it with French exams called BACC. Wow, my people in Cameroon, I like to hear from you about this. And still on Cameroon, a lawyer is now facing death penalty for organizing a protest. A protest on Congo, Felix Ago Bella has been detained since January. They charged this man with treason, with terrorism, with everything. It counts. And um, can you believe that the government is saying that he will be tried in a military tribunal? This guy was arrested from the English speaking part of the country. They took him to the French speaking part of the country. And now they are saying that he will be tried by the military tribunal. By the way, he's not just a lawyer. He's the leader of the now banned Cameroon Anglophone Civil Society Consortium. And then he's also the leader of the FACO Lawyer Association. And and also the leader of the Center for Human Rights and Democracy in Africa. In fact, this man has worked with the UN as a human rights officer. Now he's facing death penalty for organizing a protest. This is what Pobia is doing. Welcome to Fosby Luxury Hotel. At Fosby Luxury Hotel, we offer excellent service. Our rooms have all the necessary facilities to make your stay comfortable and memorable. You will also have access to internet service, breakfast, 24 hour power supply, full air condition, free international calls, free tire pumping service, and free car battery charge. So, what are you waiting for? Quickly visit Fosby Luxury Hotel. We are located as number one, Adeli Roba Michele, off Raja Rasaki Road, First Estate, Amuo, or the Fifth Start Village. For more information or reservation, please call us. 080 75 78 7135 or 080 99 90 You can also take advantage of our online ongoing promo at www.fossvhotel.com to make your reservation and payment for your favorite room, which attracts a discount rate. Please note, rooms are reserved based on first come, first serve. Fossvhotel experience the home of comfort. They come, they come.